Hey there, guys. It's Kenny, and today I want to talk to you about something really interesting, the Silk Road. You see, without this ancient trade route, China might not have some of the things we take for granted today, like the habit of sitting on chairs. Now, you might be thinking, what's the connection between the Silk Road and chairs and why these chairs are worth millions of dollars? Well, let me tell you now. Let's go. While explaining why the Silk Road is related to chairs, I'd like to introduce what the Silk Road is. In the year 138 BC of the Han Dynasty, Emperor Wu sent Zheng Qin as an envoy to the western regions with the intention of persuading the Da Yuji tribe to join forces with the Han Dynasty to attack the Qingnu. However, Zheng Qin failed to accomplish this strategic task. Instead, he accidentally opened up a passage to the western regions, which is now famously known as the Silk Road. The Silk Road was an important trade route for ancient commerce between the East and the West. China's main exports to the West were silk, tea, porcelain, and lacquerware, while the West's main exports to China were sesame, walnuts, carrots, cucumbers, grapes, pomegranates, amber, and other goods. Even during the Achaemenid Empire, Iran had already been trading with China through the Silk Road. They imported raw silk and then used the traditional Sassanid spinning method to process it. From the archaeological data, we can see that the silk textiles produced during the Sassanid period were exquisitely crafted and had a profound impact on Byzantine and Central Asian cultures. In Central Asia, merchants from Sogdiana were also very familiar with the trade activities of the Silk Road. As early as the 4th century, cities such as Chang'an in China had already gathered a large number of merchants from Sogdiana. The Silk Road was an important link for cultural exchange between the East and the West. The four great inventions of ancient China were successively introduced to the West through the ancient Silk Road before the emergence of modern European civilization, becoming a necessary prerequisite for the development of capitalist production methods. In the 3rd to 8th centuries, some important artistic centers emerged in Central Asia where their works were influenced by Greek and Roman cultures and arts. The urban architecture of the Sassanid dynasty also had the characteristics of a fusion of Eastern and Western cultures. Western culture greatly influenced the Tang dynasty as well. For example, the music and dances of Kucha gradually began to be accepted in the central plains. The Silk Road also promoted the spread and exchange of various religions. Buddhism, Zoroastrianism, Christianity, Manichaeism, and Taoism were all spread and exchanged in the regions along the Silk Road. The Silk Road was not just a simple trade route but also a cultural exchange platform. It played an important role in promoting the development of Eastern and Western Western civilizations and the integration of various cultures. Now let me tell you why, without the Silk Road, Chinese people might not have the habit of sitting on chairs today. Now, let's talk about the fascinating history of the Hu Chuang or folding stool that originated in the western regions and made its way to China through the Silk Road. In Chinese, Chuang means bed. Now, don't be fooled by its name. The Hu Chuang is not a bed, but rather a lightweight and foldable seat also known as the folding chair, rope bed, or crossed legs chair. It's like a small bench, but instead of a wooden seat, it's made of fabric or a similar material that can be rolled up, and its legs can be folded together. The Greeks introduced the folding stool to the world in the 4th century BC, and around the 2nd century BC, they replaced the Indian rulers in the Gandhara region. Subsequently, various people, including the Saka, Parthians, and Kushans, occupied the region. With wars and migrations, the western and eastern parts of Asia became more connected, resulting in more frequent exchanges. Thus, the Hu Chuang and other elevated seats gradually spread eastward through ancient Egypt, Greece, the Middle East, Central Asia, Genhara, West Asia, South Asia, and finally into China during the Qin and Han dynasties. The earliest record of the Hu Chuang in China dates back to the early Western Han dynasty, as seen in the stone carvings on Siu Tang Shan Hill in Shandong Province. This means that the Hu Chuang was already present during the reign of Emperor Wu of Han. During the Eastern Han Dynasty, Emperor Ling of Han was a big fan of the Hu Chuang, and this led to many aristocrats in the capital city following suit. However, at that time, the Hu Chuang was still a luxury item only used by the wealthy and not yet popular among commoners. It's amazing to think that this simple yet versatile piece of furniture traveled such a long way to reach China. It is a testament to the importance of trade and cultural exchanges along the Silk Road, connecting people and ideas across vast distances and diverse cultures. Later, the name of Hu Chuang changed, 
But why did the name change, you wonder? Well, during the Sui dynasty, the royal family was composed of Han Chinese who assimilated with the Sinbei minority group through intermarriage. Many of the top officials in the court were also from minority groups. As a result, the Sui dynasty was sensitive to the use of the word Hu, which means barbarian. So, the furniture's name was changed to Jiao Chuang, which means intersecting bed, due to the characteristic feature of the front and back legs crossing each other. During the Tang dynasty, the emperor Zunzhong often went hunting and needed to rest on the Hu Chuang. He had it modified to include a backrest, which increased its functionality and comfort. By the Five Dynasties period, everyone from the emperor to the common people was using the Hu Chuang. As the furniture evolved, it became lighter and more portable, making it easy to carry around. The nomadic Jurchen people also used the Hu Chuang as their furniture of choice. During the Song, Yuan, Ming, and Qing dynasties, members of the imperial family and wealthy merchants would bring their Hu Chuang with them when they went out on hunting trips. Since the Ming dynasty, the Hu Chuang was called the Jiao Yi. Do you know the two sitting postures that humans have, the cross-legged sitting and the dangling leg sitting? Before the introduction of the Hu Chuang, also known as the folding stool, people mostly sat cross-legged on the ground. During the Han Dynasty, the Hu Chuang was introduced, but it was not yet a common item and was only used by nobles or during special ceremonies. So, most people still sat cross-legged on the ground. It wasn't until the Wai, Jin, Southern and Northern Dynasties that the Hu Chuang started to be widely used due to the integration of different ethnic groups and lifestyles. This marked the beginning of the shift from sitting on the ground to sitting on the Hu Chuang in China. By the Sui and Tang Dynasties, both cross-legged sitting and dangling leg sitting coexisted. During the Sung and Yuan dynasties, chairs and stools for dangling leg sitting were already widely available, indicating that they had taken over as the dominant furniture. People transformed the act of kneeling into sitting, and the Hu Chuang played an important role in this process. The Hu Chuang was initially introduced to the central plains from the western regions during the Han dynasty. Its name and shape underwent a series of long-term evolutions and developments. The Hu Chuang was the earliest high-seated furniture used in the central plains region, and its influence led to the gradual transition from low-seated to high-seated furniture. At the same time, dangling leg sitting gradually replaced the traditional cross-legged sitting, and it also changed the set of etiquette created by cross-legged sitting. The Hu Chuang played a significant role in the cultural fusion of the Chinese nation. It not only influenced furniture design but also altered people's lifestyles and social norms. Nowadays, we may take sitting on a chair or stool for granted, but it's fascinating to think about how our sitting habits have evolved over time and how a simple piece of furniture Furniture like the Hu Chuang played a crucial role in this process. Have you ever heard the saying sitting on the first chair to refer to someone in charge? Well, that first chair refers to a folding chair, which means Hu Chuang, known as a Jiao Yi in Chinese. In ancient times, this type of chair was a symbol of status and was used exclusively by high-ranking officials and nobility during their travels. Despite being a rare and important type of furniture, the folding chair has a common problem shared with other collapsible furniture. It's prone to damage. Out of the public and private collections, there are only around 30 surviving Huang Wali folding chairs from the Ming and Qing dynasties, with only about 10 of them still circulating on the market. This rarity is why they are considered to be heavyweight pieces of Ming and Qing furniture. In May 2021, a Huang Wali folding chair from the late Ming dynasty and early Qing dynasty was sold for 65.97 million Hong Kong dollars, about 8.5 million US dollars at a Christie's auction in Hong Kong. This is not the first time that the Huang Wali fever has swept the Hong Kong auction scene. In July 2020, a series of Ming-style furniture pieces were sold for much higher prices than their estimated values, creating a buzz in the market. At the spring auction in 2021, Christie's Hong Kong achieved a 73% success rate, selling 19 out of 26 lots and realizing a total hammer price of 118 million Hong Kong dollars, about 15 million US dollars. The high demand for folding chairs played a significant role in this success, with the total hammer price exceeding the pre-sale low estimate by 40 million Hong Kong dollars. In October 2022, a Ming Dynasty Huang Wali round-backed folding chair set a new record for the highest price ever paid for a Chinese classical furniture piece at a Sotheby's auction in Hong Kong. After 15 minutes of intense bidding, the chair was sold for 124.6 million Hong Kong dollars, about 16 million US dollars, which was eight times higher than its estimated value. 
This made it the second highest priced Chinese classical furniture piece ever sold at auction and broke the world record for the highest price paid for a Chinese folding chair. So, that's a wrap. Thanks for watching and learning about why the Silk Road is related to the habit of sitting on chairs in China today and why these chairs are worth millions of dollars. I hope you found it as fascinating as I did. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and giving this video a thumbs up. It really helps to encourage me to keep creating more content for you all. And if you have any suggestions for future topics you'd like me to cover, please leave a comment below and let me know. I look forward to bringing you more insights and commentary on Chinese history, culture, and artifacts. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.